Matic's player this morning talking to German Simon Corning, a, a second update in just a month. Simon, we've been starting releasing players. Paul Black, we're thinking behind that. Paul, it was a difficult one because Paul is probably one of my favourite players. He's been here for a long time. A really lovely lad and it's difficult. Um, it certainly wasn't a financial issue. Paul was not one of our bigger earners. But the manager makes the decisions and we go along with it. Uh, we wish Paul the best of luck. He's a top, top guy and I hope he goes on to get himself a club. And uh, talking about left-backs then, we'll be a bit short at the back. Any movement? Not at the moment. Um, we've looked at one or two. The only one I can tell you that won't be coming here next year is Ben Parker. For those that don't know, Ben Parker was, was the one that could have come here. Leeds, Neil Warnock very kindly gave us permission to take him on uh, free and they would pay the wages, give him the opportunity to play some football. And for whatever reason, he declined to do that and instead preferred to do nothing, which is the mentality of some players today. It's an absolute disgrace, but let's see where he ends up. So we've also been releasing some of our younger end uh, from the, the youth team. Yeah, we have. It's always a very difficult time when we do that. There's some lovely kids amongst them and some very talented footballers. And you never quite know what you're releasing and you never quite know what you're keeping. Having said that, again, it, it's totally down to the manager and his staff. It's not Tony Filiscoke's decision. He will have some input. Um, I have players that I like that are sometimes released. I have players that I don't like that we sometimes keep. But it's not for me to make any decisions. It's totally down to the manager at the time. Paul has made his decisions. And again, as a club, we stick by it. Looks like we're going to finish in the 18th position, maybe we'll make 17th. Is that what you foresaw at the beginning of the season? At the beginning of the season, I was hopeful for a top half finish. Um, I think every club goes into the season with renewed hope. Um, after four or five weeks, I actually believe we had the squad and the players to finish higher than that and possibly even make a run for the playoff places. At one point, we were a few points, two or three points outside the playoff places with games in hand. So I'm disappointed where we've ended up. Having said that, it is a direct reflection on the crowds. I think um, I was looking at a website the other day, Soccer365, and it's got all the attendances there. And I think we are very close to where our attendances are. In other words, I think we are 16th or 17th in terms of attendance, and that's where our crowds have ended up. And if you look at the bigger clubs, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, Charlton, I don't think it's a coincidence that the number of fans that they have reflect their finishing position. If anybody has any concerns about uh, the happenings at Boundary Park, are you still open to them coming down to speak to you? Absolutely, Gordon. Um, I've always said that. I have no problem with people coming down the whole time. We've ha I've had a few in the last couple of weeks, and they tell me how it is, and I want fans to tell me how it is. I don't want fans to come here and tell us we're doing this right, and you're a good chairman, or, you're, or it's a fantastic club. I want people to come down and tell me the truth, tell me what their issues are, and the door is open any time. I think most people that have known the club for a, or been around the club for a long time recognise the fact we, we do have an open door policy. They can walk in. If I'm around, that's fine. If they want to make an appointment, they can call you up, Gordon. They can send you an email, and we'll arrange it. Not a, not a problem at all. Season's not quite over yet. Carlisle United coming to Burnley Park on Saturday. Expecting a big crowd? Yes, um, I don't think it will be as big as Carlisle um, originally anticipated. They told us a couple of weeks ago that it would be around 4,000 fans. Um, I think we'll be nearer to the 2,000 mark, which is still great for us. It's a, a nice payday, which we need. I think had they been in pole position, had they been on 70 points as opposed to 69, um, then I think we would have had the full 4,000. But they are third favourites to go through after Stevenage and Notts County. So it'll be a big crowd, it'll be helpful, and it'll be a good atmosphere. I hope we can bring a few as well, and I'm looking forward to it. The season ticket deadline draws ever closer? Yeah, it does. It's, uh, it's not long to go now. I think we've got eight, ten days left. Um, it has slowed down a little bit, which I'm slightly concerned about. We are behind last year's schedule. Not sure the reasons behind it. I hope the fans do come out and um, buy their tickets. But if they don't, they don't. We, we march on, we keep going. But it is important to us that season ticket holders from this year renew. They are the lifeblood of the club, as I always say. Um, we've had plenty of interest in the £10 tickets. Um, I think that's a good thing. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, we'll see what happens over the course of the next week, 10 days. Simon, can we talk about the way forward next year? I believe that there might be some changes in the way we're paying our players. Not necessarily, Gordon. Um, I did say to Paul last week in one of our many chats that I still find it very difficult after all these years to understand why players get paid 
the amount of money they do get paid whatever their performance is. So if we lose one nil at home, they get the same money as if we win five nil away. Okay, they get a little bit more of a win bonus, and um, but everything else is the same. The appearance money, the wages, and I don't think that's fair in any other job. You do a good job, you get paid more money. You do a bad job, well, either you get fired or you don't get paid. And our fans pay a lot of good money to come through the door and watch it and to be entertained. And many times they're not. I, in the ideal world, I would love to go to a scenario where players are getting seven, six, seven hundred pounds a week and they can get another six, seven hundred pounds if they win. But if they don't win, they get their seven hundred pounds and they go home and struggle like everybody else. And I think it would make a big difference to them. I'm not saying it is something I can implement. I'm just saying that that's something that I would love to be able to go to because there are too many times when players, not just at this club, but in general, don't go out and give a hundred percent. I've always said that I can take losing a game. It's not a problem for me at all. It happens. That's football. If you didn't lose, it wouldn't be fun. It's the effort on the pitch, though. If players are not putting the effort in, then I do resent the the high wages that some of them get paid. And it doesn't hurt them the way it hurts the fans. It hurts the board. It hurts the chairman. So, yeah, I'd like to go to some kind of model like that. Is it going to happen? It'd be a brave man to start it. We hear a lot about the TV revenue and the loss of it. Just how serious is that to Oldham Athletic? I spoke about it last week, it is very serious, but again, not just to Oldham, it's to all the clubs. I do think, though, everybody is going to trim in accordance with each other, so it's not going to affect us perhaps as badly as I originally anticipated, because speaking to other chairmen, everybody's going to cut their cloth accordingly. Uh, we did make some TV money this year from, uh, from the Football League, which was great. We had um, £10,000 from the Sheffield Wednesday game. We made £30,000 from the MK Dons game. We made, contrary to what some people believe, we made absolutely nothing from the Liverpool game. Um, and we didn't make anything from the JPT either because that was pre-arranged with the Football League. That's part of the parcel that you sign up to. So we made £40,000, which is more than we made last year. And very welcome. Um, the big money is in the FA Cup. If you get an FA Cup game, you can get £160,000 for a third round game. So shame the Liverpool game wasn't uh, screen live because that would have made a huge difference. But it's luck of the draw. So in ending, I suppose it's not rocket science. The bigger the crowds at Boundary Park, the better the players. At the end of the day, that's what it is. This is not me saying to the fans that we're not going to have good players because we don't have good crowds. In fact, the people listening to me talk are, are the fans that come week in, week out. I'm sure of it. Certainly the vast majority. It's difficult for a club like us. We are on the doorstep, as I said before, of some huge clubs, United and City. But apart from that, we've there's choice around here. You've got Barry, you've got Rochdale, you've got Macclesfield. There's, there's a Stockport. There's a lot of clubs around here. There, there really are to uh, to choose from, and they're all suffering. We're looking at another club around the corner from us, Macclesfield, that have gone out the the football league. Add that to Stockport. That's two in the last couple of years. Rochdale have got relegated. Barry have done a very good job and uh, stayed in this division this year. So, in how bad a shape are we in? I, I have to say that we are holding our own. It's not easy. The crowds are small. We touched 2,000 a couple of times this year. We're between two and 3,000. And it's a worrying trend, but it's something which a lot of the other clubs share. I don't think we're doing anything more wrong than the other clubs. It's just difficult for people at the moment. So, in closing then, uh, with this interview, we're asking fans really to stick with us. We're trying to get our house in order and season tickets if they could help us out with them. Absolutely. At the end of the day, you're as good as your fan base. That's the bottom line. And there's nothing else that really matters as much as the fans coming in. Thank you very much, Simon. Thanks, Gordon.